So this is an answer to your questions about Dinosaur 44 and one of you, a lucky winner that I can't name because of Kickstarter rules, but we know who you are, you're going to get a cool prize. And what is more appropriate for a game about the primeval monsters than a figure of Ubo Sathla, the source of all Earth life? So you, the lucky winner, are going to get this awesome figure along with the Elder Tablets that have all wisdom. Don't read them because you might learn things you don't want to know. But this is your prize. We're shipping it off to you today or tomorrow. So congratulations. On to the questions. First question, be honest. Was this the most fun I had prototyping? He imagines that someone went to the dollar store and grabbed some armor and dinosaurs for all the play sessions. Well, in fact, that is precisely right. I did go to the store uh, and get like, I even got a Kentrosaurus, that was cool. Some of the dinosaurs I had to get from Amazon, like uh, like Anathronicus is not easily found at the dollar store or Styracosaurus. But how cool is it that I got to buy a Anathronicus and a Styracosaurus? And I'm reaching over because look, army guys! Woohoo! In two different colors. I got army guys too. So uh, and then it even has the lame army guys that we all hated as kids, like the minesweeper. But it also has a bazooka guy, so all is well. Um, so yeah, that was super fun to do that and get all the figures for the sessions. So will the dinosaurs have variable tactics? Uh, well, if you're talking about the dinosaurs that. Um, uh, that appear on the map to do things. Yes, absolutely. Let me give you an example of just the lesser minions. Okay, the vermin are like the baseline minions that just move and attack and they're, I mean, they're not boring exactly, but someone has to be the baseline, right? The pterodactyls move double speed and don't attack. They're just trying to get right to the base and blow it up when they hit there. I guess they lay eggs or poops on it or eat, or eat your captain or something. And, uh, and the raptors don't even target the base, they move around following the players, well, your heroes, right? Trying to kill them and doing extra damage. So the dinosaurs all have their own unique tactics that are quite different. So is there any way the Marines can set up traps and lure dinos into said trap? Well, first off, the troops in the game aren't just Marines, they're also army because by this time in the war, it was very common to have mixed army and Marines. Actually, that's true all through the war. Uh, I mean, there was a few cases where it was only Marines or only army. Okay, that's not the point. That's not what you're asking. Yes. The Marines set up traps and lure dinos into the trap. It's explicitly, we call them ambushes in the game, but you place ambushes. It's a huge, huge part of the game that you have to place ambushes and then you have to get the dinosaurs to go there. Now, with the, with the dinosaurs that follow you around, you can move to an ambush to make them go there and then hit them with the ambush. With dinosaurs that follow the regular path, you have to predict where they're going and put the traps, the ambushes in front of them. So you can set up machine gun nests, you can target mortar fire, all that where. Next question. I think the best way to defend against dinosaurs is to defoliate the jungle. The further away you can see them coming, the more you can exploit your one advantage, which is long range firepower. This guy has thought a lot about it, but here's the two things he didn't think about. First is that in World War II, we didn't really have very many defoliating agents. Second, the dinosaurs, as far as stealth goes, I would say that the dinosaurs are actually less stealthy than humans. We're a lot smaller, and, the, and if we defoliate the jungle, then the dinosaurs who have excellent eyesight can see us far away too. Maybe that's not always good. We can't hide or conceal ourselves at all or conceal our ambushes. So of course we can use our long range firepower. So I'm not sure which of those advantages for us is better. You know, there it is. Okay, for Dinosaur 44, will there ever be a demo video? Yes, in fact, I think it's up right now on the site. I guess this is an early question. Uh, you guys suggest <coughs> use a cannon that shoots a big net. Only a temporary solution. Well, if you wanted to capture the dinosaurs, yeah, that would work. But you also remember these guys are landing on the island. They're expecting to find the Imperial Japanese army and they didn't. They found dinosaurs. They didn't have giant nets because nobody wanted to shoot nets at the Japanese because that wouldn't be very effective. Will there be flamethrowers in the game? He asks. Flamethrowers and dinosaurs is the most awesome combination that I can think of. That is a cool combination. Um, there are flamethrowers in the game. There is no hero who only carries a flamethrower, but there is flamethrower gear you can get and attach to your hero, then you can use flamethrowers. Next person, why isn't there an option to play as dinosaurs? Ha! Ah, this is an old question because you can. We have the dinosaur. We released that on Friday and you can absolutely play as dinosaurs. Uh, next question is kind of short. It's called M60 Machine Gun. Well, 
the problem with the M60 machine gun, besides the fact it doesn't have a very good barrel change option, is that we didn't have any in World War II. We just had the M8, the, the M2 heavy machine gun and the M19, figure what it is, the 30 cal. We didn't have M60s, so you're stuck with the machine guns we had available in 1944. Next person, firebomb air support. I am not sure if we had napalm yet in July of 1944, but we do have air support in the game. Uh, you can, it's one of the things you can call in air, air, air drops on the, on the enemies. It's, it's one of the gear, but it's not really a gear. It's a radio call for air support. Okay. Pit traps filled with explosives. This is one of the ambushes you can have. Superior firepower. Well, I mean, the, the, the humans have a lot of ranged weapons. The dinosaurs don't. We have a tap traps that are aimed at that, like, like, uh, 155 artillery fire, things like that. Um, what is my favorite dinosaur? Asked this person. My, well, I guess I gotta admit it's the Tyrannosaurus Rex. I really like Tyrannosaurus Rexes. They are cool. One of the things a lot of people don't know about Tyrannosaurs because they're so famous is that Tyrannosaurs are actually a really weird dinosaur. They're unlike, one of the reasons they became famous, a paleontologist interested in it, is because its structure and build was not like any other carnivorous dinosaur. It was, it's different. It has a, a, a heavier, rounder bite. It has a wider skull instead of a narrow slashing skull. It's, it's, its body build is actually not super stout and, and, uh, and massive. It's, I mean, it looks massive because it's big, but it's actually very gracile and built for speed. So it's just bizarre. Anyway, so my favorite dinosaur is T-Rex. Uh, I like tactical war games. How are the fog of war, which we did in the game? Um, we aren't uh, using the fog of war in this game. It's not really a tactical war game. It's a fun, let's kill dinosaurs game. And and uh, the fog of war is mostly represented by the fact you don't know which dinosaurs are coming as they come onto the map. But it's not very easy for like a brontosaur or an Othronicus to conceal itself. So you kind of know what's going on. And of course, the, uh, the, the Yithians and the... Um, uh, mad scientists have little uh, uh, sensor devices all over there. They know where the, where the humans are. There are so many great prehistoric animals that I can only include a few. Yeah, what are some of the favorites I'd leave out? Man, there were so many I wanted to have in the game that I couldn't do. I uh, I wasn't able to ha have any uh, protoceratopses. I wasn't able to have um, a mosasaur. I had to leave out uh, Leedzichthys and... Uh, um, Anomala Caris. Well, maybe not Anomala Caris, but uh, what's the big killer shrimp one? I can't think of the name from the Cambrian when jellyfish ruled the earth. I wanted to have uh, a Titanoboa is another one I have left out. And then there's the, uh, the the Eocene, can't think of its name, but it was a it was a crocodile that was quite large that they think walked erect some of the time. So that was kind of cool. There's a lot of things I had to leave out. It's depressing. I, I did, oh yes, ammonites. I didn't have a giant ammonite. Oh man, I wanted to have that, but I could only have 12 for the heroes and like six for the monsters. So are you going to use some references or Easter eggs? Okay, this game is chock full of Easter eggs. So just watch for them. And I can't tell you what they are because that is the fundamental game designer rule that I that you never tell people what the Easter eggs are. That is for the players to figure out. In preparation for this game, are there any films that I recommend watching to set the mood or learn facts from? Well, I don't know about learning facts from, but the films that are most appropriate are gonna be things like The Valley of Guanji, which is not army guys versus dinosaurs, but it's cowboys versus dinosaurs. And how cool is that? Also Ray Harryhausen. There's also The Land Before Time, which features a, a German submarine and a bunch of, uh, uh, not prisoners, it's hard to explain, but there's a German submarine and some modern World War I characters that are encountering an island full of dinosaurs and plesiosaurs and pteranodons and things like that. So that's a that's another good choice. Um, let's see. Uh, as far as non-fictional movies about dinosaurs, I mean, there's so many good documentaries. Walking with Dinosaurs, Walking with Monsters, I thought was even better than Walking with Dinosaurs because it has the non-dinosaur creatures and those are cool to see. Are there mutations? Yes. Um, the dinosaur gear for the dinosaur heroes includes uh, mutations and, 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 and conditioning and, and uh, implants and stuff to make them tougher. Is there a way to call in reinforcements when a player becomes dino lunch? So the way the game treats it, because it's a light kind of fun game, instead of when you're eaten by a dinosaur, you're just being dead. What happens is you're officially 
KO'd and you reappear back at the base camp after the medics fix you up. Now, I understand that if you're bitten by a Tyrannosaurus, you don't really get wounded. It's kind of like all over, right? But because uh, the Tyrannosaurus removes 40 pounds of meat from you, then like he's done. But so you could, if you wanted, bring in a new hero at that point. But uh, we just let you play the keep playing the same hero. Okay, uh, maybe it's his twin brother with the same name. Just like in real warfare, the dinosaurs need to have a combined arm strategy. Well, they do use a combined arm strategy in two different ways. Um, one of the ways is that when there's hero dinosaurs, that, that they can move and attack with the minions that are already appearing on your map to come attack the heroes, if soon you're not the, the, those dinosaurs, right? And uh, and the other thing is that that when the, the dinosaurs themselves, they kind of naturally create um, combined arms by the random things. Like, for example, if you're in a tile and there is uh, pterodactyls and raptors, you have to choose whether you're going to, which one you're going to attack because they use the same thing. If you attack the rap, if you attack the pterodactyls, they won't get to your base and destroy it, but the raptors will get to, to punch you. So you kind of have to, uh, uh, you're kind of forced to choose who you're going to get. Um, say, even more so if the uh, big dinosaur, the, the greater minions spawn with them. So like the plesiosaurs ability for example, because he has a long neck, because he can attack an adjacent tile. So you have to like, I can't even be next to that tile if I don't want to be attacked by him. So what do I, how do I plan? How do I defend myself against the thing? So there's there's actually quite a bit of strategy for a game about dinosaurs versus Iron Man. Okay, a person asks the question of a Tyrannosaur with three Velociraptors around. Okay, this would be a really, really terrible fight because the Tyrannosaur already rolls six dice of different colors. And then the Velociraptors, three of them would roll six more dice. So any hero in that tile would be potentially attacked by 12 dice. That might be game over for that hero right there. Um, or as I said before, he'd be KO'd, you know. Will it be possible to call in support bombardments from ships or friendly aircraft? Uh, some of the gear in the game is in fact radios and, and handy talkies that call in bombardments or airstrikes. Um, is there a chance to have friendly dinosaurs for dino versus dino fights? Well, I'll be frank. The way that the dinosaur heroes work and the way that the human heroes work is pretty much, I mean, they have different stats and stuff, but they work the same way. And there's actually nothing in the rules except for the theme that prevents a dinosaur hero from being on the same team as the, uh, as the army guys and fighting the other dinosaurs and vice versa. So you can, so, uh, I mean, we don't, uh, it's not the official way to play the game, but you can do, in fact, we did it. So yeah, you can absolutely have, uh, <coughs> you know, have dinosaurs on each side or armor guys on each side. So as we know. Okay, how would you defend yourself against the hordes of dinosaurs? The way you defend yourself against the hordes of dinosaurs is that you set up your ambushes and traps at the same time as you're going in with your soldiers and you're punching the dinosaurs that you think are most lethal and threatening. You have to cooperate with the other team members. You can't just all go to the same place, or maybe you have to go to the same place. You're like, okay, if I, go, I, if I attack the velociraptors here, then I can move to this tile next to the lava lake and I can plant a trap. I'll be attacked by the Styracosaurus, but maybe I'll survive. And then meanwhile, you go see if you can hit the Styracosaurus along with my friend Link. And if you can both hit him really hard, maybe you can kill the Styracosaurus. That will keep me from being killed. And this, so there's lots of uh, decisions to make. I like the terrain build for war games. Will there be expansions or free online scenarios to build new ones? There are... Um, Will there be terrain smash of other environments? If Dinosaur 44 does well in the market, we absolutely will do expansions for other environments. Maybe we'll add a uh, Siberia uh, map where you can be the Red Army going up against uh, things frozen in the permafrost, you know, or uh, maybe have some British dinosaurs rising up in Scotland or somewhere so we can see like Baryonyx or, you know, the British dinosaurs they had there. Um, there is uh, there's actually a whole map built map book in the game that has I think 22 different maps and plus there's rules to make your own maps plus every map has variations so there's a ton of maps. What's my favorite time period? Devonian, Triassic, or Pleistocene? My favorite time period is the Cambrian when jellyfish ruled the earth. What about well? Except you know what? The Permian's pretty cool. The weird 
clumsy looking um, mammal synapsids and reptiles of the time of the Permian are really interesting. Plus, I'm really keen to know what was causing all the extinctions then. I've, I have like three books about the Permian extinction and none of them know what did it. And it was a way bigger extinction than the dinosaurs extinction. I want you to know. It was like, it was lethal. Okay, so how about a Cthulhusaurus? Um, I don't think Cthulhu would mate with a dinosaur. Um, but we do have Cthulhu elements in the game because in the boss pack, which I believe we've, we've announced, there are old ones, uh, flying polyps, and Yithians, all from the, the ancient times that appear as bosses that you can fight. So you do get, do get a little bit of Cthulhu in it. That's not because I, the game is a Cthulhu game, it's just that I always seem to sprinkle a little bit of Cthulhu in every game I do. Thank you for watching this, and remember, Ubo Sathla is the reason we got to have Styracosaurs.